In this episode, we are going to talk about the band gap and other materials we can use in our studies. So we are still on the electronic configuration and how electrons will move to cause a current in our semiconductors. So to clearly understand and differentiate why conductors insulators and semiconductors have different electrical conductivity, we must understand this principle called the band gap. Are we okay? So the band gap is basically the difference in energy between the valence band and the conducting or conduction band. Are we okay? So Remember, when we draw the electronic configuration, this is the nucleus, this is the first shell, this is our second shell, and say this is our third shell. Now, the last shell is what we refer to as the valence shell, right? And any electron in that shell is also called the valence electron. Those electrons are the ones which involved in bonding, which is covalent bonding or ionic bonding, or whether metallic bonding, they are basically from the valence electrons. So now, inside the atom, from the valence shell, we also have what we call the conducting band, or from the valence band, we are also have the conducting band. What makes it possible? for the current to be generated in the material. Are we okay? So we are going to look at that behavior for insulator, semiconductor, and a conductor. So here, we are saying this is the amount of energy that a valence electron must have to jump from the valence band to the conduction band. Once it is in the conduction band, the electron is free to move throughout the material and is not tied to any given atom. So if we have a material and we are having its configuration in this figure form and we have say one electron at the valence shell. Now let's look at this part. This is part one, this is two, this is three. This is an insulator diagram for the band gap. We are saying it is the difference in energy between the valence band and the conducting band. A material will be able to conduct or have elect high or medium electrical conductivity only if electrons are present at the conduction band. If they are the valence band that does not constitute electricity or electrical conductivity. The electrons must be able to move into the conducting band for electrical conductivity. So when we look at the gap between the valence band and the conducting band for insulator, it is a wide gap. Do you see that? So you need a lot of energy. The electrons need a lot of energy in order to move or cross this gap. You see that. So say they need about 50 joules of what energy, whether heat or any form of energy to move them. Temperature, which is heat, to move them from the valence band to the conduction band. And the problem with insulators is that before they even attain such an energy, the material will be melting or it is going to what? change in form, which is going to destroy the entire material, which makes it very difficult for insulators to conduct. And in some cases, it is not even possible for them to, the electrons to attain such high energies. Are we okay? So their inability to obtain such a high energy for them to move to cross this high band gap makes them not able to conduct. Are we good? 
So insulators basically is not the presence of the electron. They have the electrons in their valence shell or the valence band, but they are not able to transfer or move from that band to the conducting band for electricity to take place. That has been the only limitation they are encountering. Are we okay? But when you look at the band gap of semiconductors, it is half of the distance of what they insulated. So you can see that, yes, they also have quite a large band gap, but for them to obtain energy, so if this needs, the insulator is needing 50 to jam, meaning this is going to have 25, right, 25 joules. And it is quite easier for semiconductors to move their electrons into the conducting band as compared to insulators. So this makes semiconductors quite or medium conducting of what electricity. I hope you see it from the diagram. The conducting band for semiconductor is halfway the insulator. So we will need half of the energy that is required for an insulator to move its electron into the conduction band at the semiconductor level. So it is quite easy for them to jam from their valence band to the conducting band. Now, when we look at conductors, we don't even need to apply much energy. The conduction band and the valence band, they are overlapping. They are just close to each other. So here, if we need 25 for semiconductors, then even 2 joules is enough because they are overlapping. We just need small energy to move from the valence band to the conducting band. That's why conductors, they are having high electrical conductivity because they don't need to cover a large band gap in order to get to the conducting band. So this is basically the idea of how electricity or electrons move inside various materials. And remember, as I said, electricity will be only possible if electrons are found inside the conducting band. So a perfect explanation is also in the second diagram here. So we can see that this is the valence band and there's the band gap. This is also the conduction band, meaning electrons needs to jump. So the jump, the electron was initially at the white position here. It is jumping because it gained much energy. As you can see, we are applying the heat energy to the material. So the electron is jumping into the conducting band. And now when it gets there, it becomes a free electron. It is able to move about. So this one is also jumping to the conducting band. And remember, we said in the previous episode that the absence of an electron is what we call a hole. It creates a hole, what we call a positive charge inside the material. Are we okay? So it is very simple for, so this material is a semiconductor, right? Looking at the band gap, it is a semiconductor application of heat is resulting in movement. So this is the idea of moving electrons in various materials because of the band gap. It's very simple. Now, we can also talk about the materials. The conductor, as we've discussed, it has high electrical conductivity because of what the overlapping, the overlapping, can talk of the overlapping of the band gap and the or it has almost no band gap the overlapping of the conducting band and the valence band now insulator is having a low electrical conductivity because there's a high or large band gap are we okay and semiconduct so we can see a copper we can see this insulator and we have these semiconductors. Are we good? So these are basically some 
of the materials. Now let's compare something. We are looking at the comparison of a semiconductor atom to a conductor. We know that conductors conduct easily. Semiconductors are medium. So we are choosing a silicon atom, which is a semiconductor, and a copper atom, which is a conductor. Why is it that the copper atom or the copper is able to conduct so fast as compared to the silicon now let's take time to analyze the electronic configuration from ball silicon is having 14 electrons so the first shell is taking two the second is taking eight ten now the third is taking four 14. copper is having 29 so the first is taking two the second is taking eight the third is taking 18. So we are left with one more. So the fourth, which is supposed to take 32, is only having one. Are we good? So if we are paying attention, we can see that as electrons move further away from the nucleus, they are less bound to the nucleus. So can you see from the silicon, we have one two three shells and from the copper we have one two three four of the shells right so between the third shell and the fourth shell which one is going to be far away from the nucleus that's going to be the fourth shell right yes so meaning the electron at the fourth shell of the copper is very far from the nucleus which makes it higher in energy are we good so meaning if we apply a small amount of energy we are able to cause a movement of this electron from the valence band to the conducting band because one it is less attracted towards the nucleus but when you look at the silicon the valence electrons are at the third shell which is closer quite closer to the nucleus as compared to the fourth one so meaning there's an attraction there's a high attraction between the electrons and the nucleus as compared to the copper are we good this makes copper to be high conducting because any small amount if we apply two joules of energy let's say we are able to move this electron then we will have to need higher energy, say 10 joules, before we can remove the energy of or the electron of the silicon atom. So the number of shells is what differentiates this copper from the silicon. Are we good? And also we can see that we are having four of the electrons at the outermost part, but we are only having one at the copper making copper a high conducting to silicon, which is a semi-conducting. We can also do some comparison between a silicon atom and a germanium atom. Both are semiconductors. So, but we prefer to use one to the other. Why? Mostly, we are using silicon comparing to germanium are we good so now let's visualize this when silicon is having one two three and germanium is having one two three and four of the shells right so as we explained with the comparison between silicon and copper germanium is also similar so the valence electrons of germanium are far away from the nucleus meaning any amount any less amount of energy will be able to cause an excitation such that they will move into the conduction band 
in that case, germanium is going to conduct or has a high conduction ability as compared to silicon, right? And in semiconductors, our aim is to find a medium conducting element or atom, which is silicon, because silicon is more, the valence electrons are more attracted to the nucleus and it will demand higher energy or a medium energy to remove them as compared to germanium. This makes silicon preferable to germanium because we will have to apply more heat or more energy to remove. In a situation where we want to conduct electricity fast, we will prefer germanium. So germanium is a more conducting semiconductor as compared to silicon. Are we good? All right, so this is just a comparison. So in a situation where you want to compare the electrical conductivity of atom, you draw the electronic configuration, you check the number of the shells, and you look at how close the valence electrons are to the nucleus, and you make the analysis. Are we okay? All right. Thank you for watching this episode. Please subscribe to the channel and check out for the next episode.